it's not going to hurt anything. Um, and actually, I like this behavior better than what would happen in C++, where it quietly just says, well, whatever happened to be in memory, that's what we're going to show you. Because that could really be confusing. Um, so this is, uh, um, it works, I'll fix it. But yeah, it did say this, and now we can refer to each element by its own index. Does that make sense? And typically what you'll do in this case is you will. Now the most common thing you'll do with a list of things, well, is you'll step through it. Right? The most common thing to do with a list is iterate. And so both of these buttons, all they do is iterate through lists. And it's interesting that the way that I did it was different in the two buttons, and the way that I happened to do this one didn't even notice there was a missing element because I did it in two different ways. Had I done the topics list using the algorithm on this button, it would have, I would have noticed right away. Let me show you the difference. You want to see it? It's not really. All right, so this show books, we're going to clear out the inner HTML of the output area. What do we have going on here? You've seen that statement before. We have a for loop. And this for loop uses as its century i. How does it start? Zero. How does it stay in the loop? i is less than books.length. Well, books is an array that's a kind of object. It has a really wonderful length property that tells us how many elements are in it. That's neat, yes? And then I++. Plus plus. So this is a very, very common idiom. In fact, the most common use of a for loop, really, is to step through an array. That's the most common usage of a for loop, is that I want to look at all the elements in an array. And so um, you also will see a variant of this sometimes, where we give it a string. String has a length. Strings are actually pretty closely related to arrays. And if I did this with strings, well, it would tell me each character in the string. That could be useful. Actually. So when you say length, uh -huh. how long the list is? Like the number of items in the array? Yes, the number of items in the array. So like above, we have five. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Why is it better to say books.length than just putting five here? Because it can change it. Because the length of the array is what I really mean, not five, right? And if the array length changes, my loop doesn't have to be changed. That's kind of cool, huh? So length is kind of like a predefined term that's already built into JavaScript. Well, it's built into the array objects. Remember, we talked about objects and properties? So the length property of the array is how many elements in it. And when I change the array, the value of that property changes, which is really awesome. Um, <laughs> Output.interHTML plus equal book sub i and a break. That's pretty cool. I could have made it a list, you know, in HTML or something if I wanted, but that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So uh, sometimes I'll want to do stuff with the books. So I'll want to do some kind of, um, uh, you know, analysis of each of them. You know, print it out in boldface or something, or look it up on Google or something. Uh, so, um, you, when you have a list of things or an array of things, the most common thing to do is put it in a loop, step through each of the elements. Does that make sense? Cool. Here's another way of doing that. Um, you can shorten a little bit for topic ID and topics, and what that does is the topic ID uh, goes through all of the values, all of the indices, and gives me all of the indices. Well, it's interesting about this example, I wish I could tell you the truth that I did it on purpose, is that since three is not a topic ID, it never tried to show me element number three. I just skipped it. So I never saw it. Um, does, does that make a certain amount of sense? It's just a shorthand. I don't use this one that often in JavaScript because this one just kind of flows for me, but whatever works for you. Uh, as you come back and we do it in Python, we tend to do it closer to this in Python. Um, and there's some neat things that are happening there. But for now, 
you have now two ways to step through an array. Does that make sense? Okay, now I want to tell you JavaScript arrays can be more powerful. We can also use other stuff besides numbers as indices, but we don't need that today. So um, if you do need it for your project, I'll help it. Coolness? Coolness, okay. Now, <coughs> let's take all this back to one more idea. You'll go away, I do not need you anymore. There's that guy again. So the user looks the same, but this time we go to four. Take a look at how I've changed it. Yes, this is a program that has a lot of bugs in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take a look at the... Um, Take a look at that make song function. Or maybe first just look at, at line 12. Distraction list. You just put them in order so array. Ooh, my distraction list is an array. Remember yesterday I said if you understand the data, you understand the program. I think, okay, I spent way too much time thinking about this stupid song. But ultimately, the essence of the song is line 12. Would you agree? That's the essence of it. If I can think of line 12, if I truly understand how this relates to the song, this program writes itself. Why did I skip one? Because having the ants go marching zero by zero would cause an existential crisis, <laughs> and it would confuse us all, so we're not gonna do that. So here, I'll just make zero empty, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, it rhymes. We good? Wait, so, where's where that where you hit the empty quotes? So that's element zero, that's element one, two, three, four. I could keep going. So you set your elements off with commas? Is that yes. How it knows yes. Which? Yeah. Now take a look at make song. <coughs> What's going on in line 20 that's interesting? Uh, this four. The four loop. Mm -hmm. Is that the step through? And that steps through the array, like most, most for loops will do. The plus plus will be Right, what does plus plus do? We've done that. So it's keep it Add one to verse num. So verse num's gonna start at one, so and it's gonna keep going until it's equal to or larger than the length of the list. So this means step through every element of the list. How often is that gonna be in your algorithm when you have a li list? If you have an array, you're likely to say in your algorithm, for every element in the array. Do you agree that's something you're probably gonna write? I mean, you do, but that's gonna probably turn into a for loop, just like that. You see that? Just a pattern. When you have a list of things, you're typically going to want to step through it. If you give a, a mouse a cookie, right? And so for each pass, what am I gonna do then? I'm gonna run that verse function, I'm gonna pass it that parameter, that value. Um, and then I'm going to run chorus. So the chorus didn't change at all, but take a look at what happened to verse. Remember the verse before? It had two main parts, and one of them had a lot of if statements. Can I make an observation about if statements? The more if statements we have, the uglier things get, and the more likely they are to break. Would you agree with me? Because I had an experience about that way back about, oh, an hour ago. <laughs> where I saw a bunch of if, else ifs that were making us crazy. And they get worse when you nest them inside each other. Look at the beautiful thing. We had like six lines of if and I only had three elements. Now we have, I only had two elements. I have four verses. How many lines replace all those ifs? One. And what else is gorgeous about this? What if the length of my array changes? This doesn't care. It just works. How awesome is that? So all those if statements are replaced by looking up an element from a list. That's what's so beautiful. And remember, you know, somebody asked you, do you always want your code shorter? And I said, no, I always want my code more elegant, which sounds like I'm talking about the same thing, but is it? 
Now, I'm looking for code that kind of takes care of itself. And that's why arrays can be so wonderful. Because what I've done here is I've separated out the content from the behavior. And in fact, we could do a version of this in another language, put in other, other distractions, and it could still work without having to change the code. You see what I'm saying? And we could change the number of elements. It would still work without changing the code. Um, so this is a really, really powerful set of ideas. You OK? OK. All right. Um, let's take a little break. I have another assignment I was going to give you, or we could start planning your project. What should you prefer? Project. Project. Start planning your project? OK. Do you need a break, or do you want me to just let you get started and take a break as you need? Lunch will be here short, okay. in about a half hour. So. All right, how about this? So what I'd like you to be able to do between now and lunch is put together a, pre a proposal for your project. It can be in Word, it can be on paper, Google Docs, just not code. So come up with some idea, I'll come around and talk to each of you, but I want you to formally write down what you're wanting to do, knowing that we'll probably change it. You okay with that? It doesn't have to be right. This is the project we the talked project. about, the final project. All of you coming away from here with something that you couldn't do two days ago. Everything that doesn't have to be much. <laughs> Done. That's all I'm asking. Now, I would like you to push yourself to whatever is the appropriate limit. You know that for yourself. You're grown ups. I don't have to do it like I would with kids. With kids, I would give you a laundry list of the things thou shalt have in that project. Some of you, if you get a completely original web page working that looks good and does everything you want, that's great. Lovely. I'll take it. Most of you, I think, are ready to actually add these other things. So make it interactive. Have it solve an actual problem. Get some input. Do some processing. Do some output. Yeah? yeah it's no doubt. Here's the thing that <clears throat> we have not taught you adequately to do. I haven't taught you now how to make any data permanent. So what happens when you run the web page in the browser? That's the length of your session. So it can't necessarily store things and come back to it, so that means probably no databases. You okay with that? Why not? It's not my rule. JavaScript doesn't allow it, and that's a really good thing. That's why we're gonna have a second three-day session in a couple weeks. That's the main thing we'll do. You okay with that? <coughs> so I'm not saying no databases because you're not smart enough for them, it's just I haven't taught you that yet, and it won't work well. Um, so I think, um, a lot of things that you might be thinking aren't databases probably are. I hear people talking about a scheduler. Yeah, that's really hard. Uh, <laughs> uh, the things that's going to be easiest are things that do like calculations of some sort. Um, a couple of you were talking about doing a little calculator. That'd be cool. Um, you know, I put in two numbers. I hit an add, subtract, multiply, divide button that shows you the results of those. Um, your business folks, so maybe doing something about you know a mortgage calculator, interest stuff, maybe some of the things that your students struggle with, that'd be a fun app to do. Um, really, uh, any, anything that takes some input, does a little processing, produces an output, would be a great application for this. Sound like enough you can get started? And I'll come around and help you individually. Like, right. a, like a tip calculator? A tip calculator would be wonderful. You found my paper. <laughs> <laughs> so what you were thinking? So, yeah, I think. I'm not sure how many teachers were working, but this, this was kind of what I was trying to use. So, you might as well stay for lunch. Where will I head? <laughs> 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 well, it's just been processing. Don't quite understand what she's talking about. Okay, so um, she's gone. Oh, she's gone. I know she's gone. 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 She came out of the end. I know. She came out the first day. That's it. Okay. She she no, I know her. I, she's from Springfield. She teaches up in Chicago. Oh. I don't know. Oh. Um, so like here, I don't think that 
So really, it's just a guess what I want. She didn't give you a sheet of fresh data. Right. So I'm just right. checking to see if the word is even. So no, no. Okay. Put placeholders in place. Maybe put, this will be a picture of it. So yeah, put some, that's brilliant. It's almost too easy. It's never too easy. It always finds a way of making it so easy. Was supposed to be here. Uh, and that, uh, sure, yeah. Hey, I'm up. also more than okay with Bruce out here, sir. If you want to work as a pair, I think that's actually when. The other person from that. More than two, yeah, but like, if you want to work together on a project, that'd be great. It doesn't have to be the first thing. And you sent me the list for our spring I sent you the Edwards list too. Okay. Sorry, so, and I think oh, Adam, yeah. I wanted to add at least that one yeah. Or, how about this? We just have a button down here. I was pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. All right. Yeah, that's a great product. Holy moly, look at you, Cody. Yeah, look at that. Wow. <laughs> Go with it. I'll back you up on that. Okay. Just, just, you know. <laughs> You know, when your kids want to know if you've learned anything this week, you just pull up that page. She'll control you. No, I'll get back on that website. That's Moodle. That's Moodle. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, Hacker Titan. Yeah, Hacker Titan. Works for first. And it's a manager of the Hacker Titan. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to work together. Yeah. You might want to do that. Well, he's doing it too. Okay. So she got back to you yet? No. He hasn't. Well, I sent it late last night. I tracked the senders at the gym. So I just sent it. We got, we got four or five in Edwardsville. Maybe four in Edwardsville. Five in Springfield. And two still in that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you saw that, but I sent it. Website that's got all of the businesses in the Addison area to the team and okay. ask them if they want to look around and just call them back. Yeah. Well, I talked to Leah this morning before I came in here, and she was on me. She had to follow up on some of that map. And then there was a Sentry company in the area. But I called a bunch of folks down in you know, Edwardsville. I don't know. <laughs> this number came from Wisconsin. This sounds so good. I'm going to tell you. No. 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 All right, that would be so great if it's like things going well here. No, I need to move on to another day. I'm going to check all this stuff. Print your stuff and start putting these packets together. Yeah, so I was going to say, now you're okay with this. Now it's the most special. Okay. Uh, the uh, career panel for Sprinkler that I printed. I already got that because uh, Linda sent that for me. I had to get that printed. I think you did it, but uh, yeah, I already printed that. Okay. All right. At some point, I've got to start. I know. I may or may not be on it. Okay. All right. See ya.